So Figma has conditional logic, variables, and expressions. So now I have to be a programmer to design in Figma? I just want to draw rectangles. Oh, hold up. I can change the entire theme of a design in seconds, create mobile iPad and desktop views in one artboard, and build fully functional working video games with this? All while designing one-tenth of the artboards and not getting strangled by redundant interactions and duplicate artboards? Whew. Seems like they've brought balance to the force. Welcome to App Design Tips. Figma just launched some of their biggest changes ever, and they're pretty exciting. Now, some of these changes sound a little technical, but don't worry. You can still use Figma the same way you've always been using it. But if you want to unlock some design superpowers, these new features are definitely worth exploring. Firstly, there's variables in Figma, and this feature allows you to switch between themes like light and dark and other themes, or change from mobile or desktop within one artboard. It's a game changer, and once you start using variables, you won't want to go back. Next, Figma has made major strides in advanced prototyping, and these new features make building realistic prototypes faster and easier. You can do all this with fewer frames thanks to things like conditional logic, mathematical expressions, and finally, they have an inline preview for quick changes, so you no longer have to have a separate window to preview your prototypes. If you want to check out any of these features yourself in Figma, I have a link in the description to get started. And they have practice files to serve as guided tours to show you step by step how to take advantage of these features and learn them. Oh, and let's not forget about Figma's improved auto layout. With new ways to use auto layout, you'll spend less time resizing and more time designing. And that's what we all want, right? Basically, auto layout was awesome before, but it now includes wrapping and min-max widths, which means content can break into fewer or more rows, giving the most design benefit for the screen real estate used. Now let's talk about Figma's new dev mode. It's a space where you can get all the details you need to start building, from measurements and specs to styles and even production-ready code. It's like your personal bridge from design to development. And the best part, it's super easy to use, just like everything else in Figma. And for all you font lovers out there, picking the right typeface for any occasion is now easier than ever with Figma's improved font picker. Improved search, filters, and font previews make the process a breeze. These changes are set to revolutionize how we design. As a designer who understands a little bit of web code and syntax, I've never wanted to dive into these more complex prototyping tools. And that's mainly because it requires you to export from designs like XD or Figma into these other tools, which force a back and forth approach for your designs and your prototyping, causing a lot of friction. And you have to learn all this conditional logic and expression logic. And at that point, you might as well just build the site or app to get that functionality but Figma has done something different that's going to intrigue designers to bite the bullet and spend a little bit of time learning how this all works. And it's all inside the same programs that we're familiar with designing. First of all, the extra time setting up variables for things like your brand colors and light and dark mode, setting up Boolean variables for toggling design elements on and off, text strings and numbers, is going to save you and your team thousands of hours in the long run trying to build out a massive design system with duplicate components for every single style, language, or counter. The conditional logic will take a bit of practice and learning, but it literally can mean the difference between 10 artboards and 100 artboards. In a shopping app, you can add and remove things from your cart. Whether your cart is full or empty, you will see different views for that. And these are all with one product page and one cart page. You can literally stop someone from advancing through a form unless they interact with the required forms, which is going to unlock a lot more powerful insights and user testing to have this logic included before development. Just to show you the most powerful examples of how this conditional logic works, I found a few games that people have created that have full functionality and conditions based on them, and imagine doing user testing to see the difficulty of a game to make sure that it's easier. So maybe if we're doing a Flappy Birds game, for example, we need to, depending on my experience level right here, maybe we need to increase the size of the gaps between the pipes. This is something that you might not know until you're in development and playing it. So for example, this was developed by Dave Williams, and you can find this in the Figma community, Playable Flappy Bird. But I'm just going to increase the size, and all I have to do is click R for restart, and then I can just tap. And so you can see this, for example, I'm going to try to tap through these pipes, and you can see that I have a score of 1 and the best score of, of 1. So if I magically get through these, ooh, 
Let's see if I can get to two here. I don't think I can do it. So if I were playing this and I want someone with my average skill level to make it through three points, I might consider widening these and I can do that right in the design. Um, but even the condition I, I have, I promise I got the score of three before I reset this, but it actually retains that best score the multiple times that you play this if I get past that. I don't know why <laughs> I'm not so good at Flappy Birds. Um, but I want to show you another game. So this is Space Invaders. And just look at this, like literally half a dozen artboards. There's a few components and then two artboards. One of them's the start screen, one of them's the game screen. And you can look at the different logic. There's three different variants in here. Um, if we wanted to see all the variables that are created, there's uh, these player variables here. Um, there's enemy variables. So it's setting up something like this. And I know it can seem confusing here, but I promise you, whoever developed this, understanding how this is used, I'll bet you if they had the same graphics and the same elements to say rebuild this game, they could probably do it between 15 and 30 minutes and have a fully functioning game. So just to show you this, um, I can hit play right here to have a separate screen, but again, this new feature where I can hit shift spacebar to actually play this within the design, so check this out. I'm just going to hit F to restart. And if I get hit by these bullets here, I'm going to die. I can hit spacebar to actually remove this. So the condition is if that hits, then it's going to remove. And I'm going to have a you win game if I actually do win. And you notice there's not even a winning screen, which means there's a conditional logic uh, built into this design to say just change the component or make this component appear um, within here. So you lose, for example. Where do I find? you lose here. I don't find it within here, but I'll bet you there's a lose overlay right here and a victory overlay. And so basically, if all of these disappear, display victory. If that hits within this area, display lose, for example. So that's the logic behind it. You can jump into the design here. This is another uh, Space Invaders and Figma community file that you can access. And you can just jump in and start to reverse engineer how all this works. So if you jump into prototyping, for example, and you see the conditions here, left key is this condition. So player X is, uh, moves is greater than 20, set player X to whatever, to move to the left, basically. Um, so you can look at that and you can even play around with what if it's greater than 30. So you can explore these features and Again, it's literally a production filling game where you win or lose based on certain conditions and variables. As a final reminder, be sure to visit the link in the description to get started exploring these features for free today. And that's it for this video. If you liked it, don't forget to give a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button for more updates, tutorials, and design tips. Until next time, happy designing.